Welcome back everyone, this is GTA Failure. In our last video we tackled the first of three Love Fist missions, that one was called Love Juice. I neglected to take a post-mission phone call in that video from Kent Paul, we're going to take that call now. How you doing mate, it's Paolo again. Look Tommy, I forgot to mention, we're going to need some extra muscle for the concert, a bit of security. There's a biker gang led by Mitch Baker, it would be great publicity. Very rock and roll baby. Taking that phone call unlocks the Mitch Baker chain of missions, and you can see the brand new icon on the minimap there, the spade. So I could do the first Mitch Baker mission right now. Instead, this video is going to be about the second Love Fist mission. It's called Psycho Killer. In this cutscene, Love Fist uses the phrase Love Rocket. What does that mean? I've got no clue. Tommy, man, am I glad to see you. What's going on? Bad vibes, Tommy. I need you again. It is heavy stuff, man. Heavy guy. This cat, we hardly know him, but he knows us. Like this cat. Knows all about us. Knows that Willie likes his ladies' underwear, eh? Or that Percy likes Jurassic. Shut up, you fool. Just get yeah. Jess Bob yeah. sheep. It's a love rocket thing, can. <laughs> Shut yeah, up. Yeah, a love rocket <laughs> thing, right? But listen, this cat. Yeah, yeah, the guy wants Love Fist dead. Dead, Tommy. Love Fist, gone. You know what they say, the good die young, but Tommy, you've got to save love We've fish. we got in two hours, and I think... Yeah, and the boys think the stalker's going to try some monkey business there. So if you know the phrase love rocket in this context, let us know in the comments. I, I can't even figure out what it might mean. But we learned that uh, apparently uh, Jez Torrent used to have sex with sheep, and uh, Willie wears women's underwear, and Percy is a huge fan of Duran Duran, which I don't know why that's an insult. I like Duran Duran. They've got some good tunes. So here we are in the Love Fist limo, trying to lure the psycho out. Uh, just check out, we've got a, a signing coming up. We've got all these people dancing around. They're getting pumped for Love Fist. And now we'll go into this unskippable cutscene. I'll see Love Fist burn. Love Fist ruins my life. Get the Psycho, don't let him escape. I'm not sure that Psycho should be capitalized there, right? It's not a proper noun. It's just short for psychopath. Anyway, uh, we need to uh, chase this guy and kill him to pass the mission. At this point, we don't know why the Psycho thinks that Love Fist ruined his life, but we will get more information about that in the final Love Fist mission. Uh, there's going to be a fixed uh, garbage truck um, coming out on the right-hand side. We won't get a good look at it here. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that fixed garbage truck spawn in uh, future attempts here. So the path that the Psycho takes is kind of random-ish, but the beginning is always the same. When he got to that T-junction, he made a left, and then he did this kind of crazy 180-degree turn to head back towards Prawn Island. And then after that, I think that the path can deviate. In this case, he came back west, but I've also seen him continue on to Prawn Island. So presumably you do a bunch of drive-bys to get his car on fire. In this case, I ended up smushing him into a building. So then once his car was on fire, he got out. And then we hit him with some drive-bys and mission passed. As you can see, $4,000 is awarded here. And passing this mission unlocks the final Love Fist mission, which is called Publicity Tour. But only if you have also done all of the missions in the Mitch Baker strand. Now we'll move on to fail states and quirks. Just wanted to give you a good look around the Love Fist because this is the first time in the entire game that we've seen it. It will show up again in the final Love Fist mission, and then once we pass that mission, it will there will be a fixed spawn of this Love Fist uh, just in front of that V-Rock building. You've wrecked the band's car. All right, so there's one way to fail the mission is to um, have this vehicle get wrecked before uh, you get down to this pink marker here by the uh, signing. And here I just wanted to show you, if you don't get into the Love Fist, then there's no party and there's no signing and there's no people over there. But once you get into the Love Fist, um, that uh, spawns all of those folks. So I'll super speed my jog over to the signing. And then we'll just take a look at uh, some of the details here uh, at this part of the mission, which I've never noticed before. So you got some female fans here, kind of they look like groupies the way they're dressed. And then you got some um, some bikers and then a lot of synchronized dancing around. And this guy's punching me. Not cool. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at where the uh, members of Love Fist will sign. So there's four members of the band, uh, plus uh, Kent Paul, the manager. So five five chairs there, I guess. That's the five people. And so they're promoting uh, their uh, their brand new album, Number of the Breast. You can see on the 
um, on the ground there were a bunch of uh, boxes of stuff, also some bottles of, uh, I don't know, champagne. And then a couple of uh, photos on the table here. We got some, some Love Fish shirts. Uh, I guess they're going to sign those things as well. And I just zoomed in here, so that says the number of the breast on that shirt. And yeah, lots of cool details that I never noticed at all. Um, then you got the uh, two security guards, the uh, PIG security guards, so you can punch them and they don't fight back. However, if you kill one of them, the security guards have been attacked, the psycho won't show, and it's mission fail. And somehow all of these folks, all the fans, know that, uh, that the signing has been canceled. And you can punch the fans as well, but again, it's it's the uh, killing of either the fan or uh, one of the security guards that will uh, that will fail the mission. So let's see what happens. The fans have been attacked. The psycho won't show. Isn't that good that the psycho won't show? Like, doesn't that mean that Lovefish should continue and and like do the signing as scheduled? Okay, so uh, what happens if we let the Psycho escape? So notice on the minimap, there's no dot, nothing telling us where the Psycho is. I, that, I, that has to be a glitch, right? Like it's programmed in in every other kind of chase mission in this game. Um, so I think it's just an oversight on the programmer's part. So anyway, we got the uh, you idiot message. Here I'm going to switch to the minigun and I'll show you the speed strat. I'm going to hop out of the vehicle right at the start of this unskippable cutscene. You couldn't even really see it, but I'm out of the vehicle at this moment. And the minigun is ready to go, and kaboom! Psycho does not get very far, as long as you're prepared to take him out right away. I mentioned that fixed spawn garbage truck that comes out um, you know, from a side street from right to left on the screen during this chase. I think it's intended to mess up the player, but sometimes it just messes up the, the Psycho instead. Uh, so we'll give you a couple of good looks at it. Here's that left turn followed by the 180 degree turn towards Prawn Island. Anyway, they died in the explosion. Mission passed. There goes the Love Fist. It's fine to have the Love Fist get destroyed after you go to the pink marker over by the signing. Okay, here comes the garbage truck again from the right. Kaboom! And in this case, I'm going to skip ahead, uh, and we'll see that uh, here after this um, left turn and then and then U-turn to Prawn Island, uh, the Psycho actually went to Prawn Island. So like I said, the path is random-ish after that kind of fixed beginning. And here, even though their vehicle isn't on fire, they got out because I got out. And so we're just going to watch this, uh, I don't know, kind of like behavior. I'm just always curious how the NPCs react when you put them in situations that they weren't expecting. And so in this case, the Psycho is frozen because I'm too far away from them, but they're ready to attack. And so once I get back within range, they begin attacking. Okay, fair enough. Uh, was that a burrito over there? Or was that a gang burrito? I forget. But I think in uh, one of my vehicle videos, I decided that uh, I should destroy every burrito that I see. Okay, so then I've never seen this before, but the Psycho will get into a different car. And I can't have that. I don't want the Psycho to commit a Grand Theft Auto, not on, not on my watch. And so we get them to slowly chase me, and um, and the love fist is uh, is still sitting here. This empty vehicle, the one that I brought over, and at some point I'm going to get um, you know kind of farther away. And I was stunned to see that the psycho stole the love fist vehicle. I, I, is this a sight you've you've seen before? I, <laughs> just seems kind of ironic that they are now in the love fist vehicle, uh, the one that I had to get in in order to uh, to proceed with this mission. So nothing too interesting happened here. I'll, I'll skip a bunch of the chase over on the eastern island. Um, but yeah, uh, a sight I never thought I would see is the psycho driving the love fist. That's got to be traumatizing for him, no? Like this this band that uh, ruined his life and, and now has this uh, um, this vehicle named after them and he's driving it around to try to save his life. I don't know. And then he dies in the explosion of the love fist vehicle. Ironic. In this next clip, I learned something about that uh, garbage truck that I never knew before. So here it's going to come out and totally wreck the poor Psycho. Um, so much so that uh, the Psycho kind of gets smushed against this other building. I decided to block the Psycho in from behind. I always like getting rides on NPC vehicles, but the Psycho apparently doesn't like giving rides. To Tommy, at least. And, uh, and so I wasn't really sure what I was trying to accomplish here. I just wanted to get the Psycho out from uh, being trapped in that vehicle. Um, 
the uh, garbage truck is just struggling right now to get to get by. I think it's kind of stuck on this building over here to my right. And uh, at some point, the garbage truck will get unstuck and almost run over the psycho. How how terrible would that be? What a way to go. But then I noticed something in the garbage truck there. I, I can see into the cab, and I'm looking for the driver, and I don't see one. <laughs> so this this is a ghost-powered uh, garbage truck, and uh, and it almost killed the psycho. All right, and so here it's coming out again, and I decided, well, you know, like, what would happen? Like, can I toss a ghost out of the the ghost powered garbage truck no i couldn't nobody came out at least as far as i could see uh but anyway just decided to uh, slowly uh drive away with the uh aforementioned ghost truck and um yeah uh, and at some point a uh drunk driver is going to do my work here i don't think i used any bullets no weapons or anything in this attempt here but uh watch for a uh, whitish grayish car there it is. Look out, Psycho. Watch your back. Boom. Easiest 4000 bucks I ever made. Hashtag ghost truck. Now we get to my challenge for this particular mission, and that is to kill the Psycho by drowning. Uh, same kind of thing we did in the previous video. Um, Love Juice was the name of that mission, and it took me a long time to get the drugs to sink in the water. And uh, we're going to use the same technique to try to get the Psycho to sink in the water. We're going to head over to the Hyman Stadium and uh, hop up onto that concrete wall and hope that the Psycho can walk in a straight line towards me, but walk into water. And while we watch this attempt, let's go ahead and read from the wiki, uh, the trivia section about this particular mission. The Psycho character was originally intended to appear without the groupie disguise at the end of Publicity Tour, according to an uncompiled mission script file used in the development of the Definitive Edition. However, the character model mentioned in the script is a placeholder cab driver pedestrian. The name of this mission, again it's called Psycho Killer, is a reference to the 1977 Talking Heads song of the same name. Yeah, I know that song. It's okay. I'm not really like a huge Talking Heads fan, but uh, that song is all right. We'll give that one a B. In the mobile version of the game, the chanting of Love Fist fans is muted. During the chase, the Psycho Sentinel doesn't have a blip on the radar. This bug was fixed in the Definitive Edition of the game. Oh, fabulous. That makes the Definitive Edition a worthy purchase, I think. Now I'll read from the wiki about commercials in Vice City. So first, the publicities that match elements of the game. Ammunition, the chain of gun retailers in all the modern GTA games. BJ Smith's used autos, uh, which at some point was called Sunshine Autos. I mean, it, that's the name on the outside of the building, but I think it's advertised in one or more commercials as BJ Smith's used autos. The Love Fist Steelheart Stone Cold Prostate Tour. We're involved with Love Fist right now with this chain of missions. And then the My Batsu Thunder Sports Car. The in-game equivalent is considered to be the Ballistic Compact, but in GTA 3, the Maibatsu company advertised another car, an SUV called the Maibatsu Monstrosity, roughly the equivalent of the Landstalker. So those four things I just read about are all actually in the game, like they exist in the game, Ammunition and Sunshine Autos and Love Fist, the band, and then the Maibatsu Thunder slash Blista Compact. So those are all in the game. Now I'm going to read for you again from the wiki, the things that are mentioned on radio stations, but that don't physically exist anywhere in the game. B.J. Smith's Fit for Football program mentioned during his interview on KChat. Jeremy Robard's Think Your Way to Success program, which he shamelessly plugs during his interview on VCPR and as well as on uh, the radio via commercials. Delio and Furax, a high-priced and less-than-moral law firm. The firm funds the show Legal Review, one of the unheard shows on VCPR. Oh, I see that their phone number here, 8669-SHADY. Shady, that's a good name. Good phone number for a less than moral law firm. Giggle Cream has three commercials referencing whipped cream spray canisters which contain nitrous oxide laughing gas as a propellant, a lethal dessert that killed 23 people and the topic of one of the questions asked to Alex Shrub, the congressman who allowed the sale of Giggle Cream. Shrub responded that most of the victims probably deserve to die anyway. And that was on VCPR. It was also mentioned by the VCPD on the police dispatch where two guys have a case of giggle cream. In the future, there will be robots. That's an interpretive dance performance at the Vice City Art Center featuring two men dancing for a robot's love, futuristic lasers, and a dehydrating manatee. It is produced and stars Claude Maginot, 
who unsuccessfully tries to direct his interviews towards uh, that instead of his TV work. Speaking of his TV work, Just the Five of Us, a parody of such 80s mismatched family sitcoms like Different Strokes. Classically trained actor Claude Maginot is slumming as the father of the family and is one of the guests on Kate Chat. Jimmy, the child star of the show who claims to be 42, is a strong reference to the star of Different Strokes, Gary Coleman, who remained childlike due to a side effect of his congenital autoimmune kidney disease treatment. Knife After Dark, a send-up of early 80s-style slasher flicks. On pressing issues, Jan Brown mentions that she won't let her kids watch the movie. We're down to 22 health, but I think we've got the psycho on a good path, straight line towards the water, get dunked. Boom! Easy challenge pass. Musty Pines, a retirement home where old people enjoy themselves until their death. Tony, uh, it's one of the DJs uh, from Flash FM, relates that someone rang Flash FM, someone called Flash M, Flash FM, confusing it for Musty Pines. Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts, a sexually suggestive donut retailer. Tony on Flash FM dedicates a song to them. Sissy Spritz, a hair care product mentioned by the hosts of V-Rock, Flash FM, and K-Chat, may cause dry mouth, dilated pupils, paranoia, heart palpitations, and nosebleeds, but your hair will be great. The Degenitron, a parody of early home video game consoles during her appearance on Pressing Issues, Jan Brown blames her kids' problems on Degenitron, calling it Degeneratron. The console is also mentioned on VCPR as a sponsor of an upcoming celebration of Proust's influence on Vice City. There are two commercials for the Pastor Richard's Salvation Statue, a parody of numerous religious donation commercials and shows, also mentioned by Pastor Richard's during his interview on VCPR. And the phone number here, 8669-SAVE-ME. As you can see, we can't continue with Love Fist missions until we finish the Biker Gang missions first. So let's head over there for the next video. Thor's Self-Help Tapes, a series of self-help tapes promoting Norse wisdom as the answer. Thor is interviewed on KChat, and his phone number is 866-PILLAGE. Finally, Yuppie and the Alien, a police drama on VBC, a parody poking fun at uh, Miami Vice, as well as the friendly alien comedy series ALF. The show is possibly also a reference to the movie and or series Alien Nation, although it is probably also an allusion to the fantastical do-gooder shows of the 80s in general, Auto Man, Manimal, Knight Rider, The Powers of Matthew, Star, etc. Mr. Magic mentions this show, Yuppie and the Alien, on Wild Style. Its predecessor is called Angel in the Night back in 1984. I guess that's in Vice City Stories. So that's it for the mission Psycho Killer. If you have any memories of this mission you'd like to share, go ahead and put them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you real soon.